think that he has a message for me that I'll share with you this morning. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 12 through 15. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. And I was struck by, of course, I'm going to skip over the patient tribulation and go right to instant in prayer. Because patient in tribulation, I don't know about you, but when you're in tribulation, I'm not feeling very patient normally. <laughs> But um, anyway, uh, so I'm going to keep going. Disturbing, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. <clears throat> rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that re weep with them that re weep. Oh my goodness. Um, so I think that, I don't know about you, but when I'm dealing with a situation, when I find myself in the middle of something, if I think about me, if I think about my situation, I'm not patient. I'm not looking at anybody. I don't care who's weeping because I'm all about me, 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 me. But I think what the Lord is trying to tell us is when we find ourselves in those situations, if we'll just stop, we look at him. Yes. And then when we look at him, we see everybody around us. And when we minister through those tribulations before we know it, we're on the other side of it. Exactly. And everybody around us has been blessed and we're blessed in the process. Amen. Um, and, you know, not that I'm dealing with a lot of tribulation in my life right now, but it comes, right? right. It comes. It, it, whether, whether we're aware or not, I mean, these, these situations come upon us all. And I feel like we're ending. We're ending the season of tribulation. So I guess I want to encourage everybody that if you have been in a season where you have been patiently waiting, look to him and just know that the next time you realize it, next time you think about it, you'll be through it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must be put on, put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So, then, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Unmovable. We are called to be unmovable. So no matter what happens, we are on firm foundation. The winds blow, the storms rage, but we are solid on the rock of Jesus Christ in our lives. And we are to be unmovable. The Bible says, when all else fails, just stand yes. and look up because he always leads us and guides us in victory. And lastly, I want to read from Colossians, from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17, out of the Message Bible. And it talks about our wardrobe which as a woman, that's a personal thing for me. I just like to talk about wardrobe, but. Um, <laughs> okay, my joke didn't work. <laughs> so chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, and discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. <clears throat> forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. So, wait upon the Lord, right? Amen. And in patience and tribulation, pick out your new clothes. Go shopping for some new clothes. And put on love. Put on love. When we put on love, love is not selfish. Love does not boast. Love is not about us. Love is about everybody but us. Love is, a, love is Jesus Christ. He is love. God is love. And when we put on love, when we put on Christ, 
we become that new creation. We can operate and move as a new creation, and then we are walking in the path that he set before us. Then we are the light in the darkness. Then we are the salt that this world needs. So I encourage you, if you are struggling, if you have been through some tough times, just know that this season of tribulation is ending. In Jesus' name. And the Lord said to me this morning, he said that we're going to be going through a season of uncovering. And I was, I, I looked up just briefly some scriptures about that and decided not to talk about any of that because those scriptures are not what the Lord was talking about. And I was like, Lord, this is not about uncovering or covering. But, and he, he said, Suzanne, he said, the season of uncovering is the uncovering of the revelation. The uncovering of the pearls of great wisdom, the, un- the uncovering of the treasures, the uncovering of the mysteries. Because, you know, the scriptures lead you to Leviticus where that's not what it talks about. But he says that we are going to be entering the season where everything is going to be uncovered. So any pretense we hold, any, anything we think we're hiding, anything that we think that we have in our control, that we're hanging on by the, by the, just by the, by the, you know, by the edge, it's all going to be uncovered. And so just let it go. Let it go and let us pray for one another. Let us encourage one another. There is freedom in that uncovering yeah, as well. Yeah. Because that fear, that fear finds us when we're holding back and we think we're hiding something. But when we let it go and when we come together to encourage each other, those things that are uncovered become our strength. They become the thing that ties us together yes. and encourages all one another. So, um, And I just encourage you all to, to read the word, to seek the Lord in, in prayer. And uh, just know that in this season there will be some wonderful things uncovered. Yeah. That's funny because he told me there's nothing to be ashamed no. of. Right. We have nothing to be ashamed of, no matter what, no matter no matter who, where, what, when. We have nothing to be ashamed of. He yes. is our cover. Yes. Right. He is that garment that covers us. We don't need a fig leaf. I didn't even think about that. That's awesome. We don't need the fig leaf. Our garment is love. <coughs> our garment is his righteousness. <coughs> you know, it's funny. I, I tell the Sunday school kids this story all the time about righteousness. I said, it's like a white coat, but you can't get dirty. All of us ladies know it's impossible to wear white and not get dirty. <laughs> but when we put on his righteousness, yes. it's a white coat. We can't ever get dirty. Yes. Wear without spot or blemish. It's like the perfect stain removal coat. It just never gets dirty, yeah. you know? Yes. And, it's not a, and it's not because of anything we do. It's just because of what it is. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyone else this morning? Any prayer requests? Any testimonies? Anything anybody would like to share this morning? Yeah, Mike. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah I uh, <clears throat> went into the store with Dean, Dean works uh, yesterday and saw him and uh, he's got a prayer request for uh, Erica that used to come with him. <coughs> she uh, went to Arkansas or to another area there and <coughs> she I guess was going to stay down there but came back to get some stuff and
just want to ask uh, everybody to remember Michael and I while we're preparing to move. It's going to be a very uh, interesting couple weeks, moving and going through all that kind of stuff. A little, little, little challenging for a marriage. <laughs> We have different ideas, not that I'm stubborn or anything, but um, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and then not that I overthink everything, just a little bit. But uh, just remember us, to be a tough couple weeks, and we've got everything has to work just right. And, you know, I, I was getting impatient when our house didn't sell, but turns out it was just right on time. So everything's working out perfectly so far, and we're super excited to be moving to Altoona. We'll be having a housewarming, inviting the church over after we get set up, and look forward to being closer and being able to fellowship more with everybody. And I want to thank Mike Fox for helping us uh, meet the requirements to sell our old house. We had to put in a railing, and uh, Michael and I did not have the know-how, the tools, or any of the above to get it finished. So thanks to Mike Fox for helping us out. Um, we have a lot of talent in this body, and so I encourage you guys uh, just to look around. And if you have a need, just ask, because we have a lot of blessings here in this body. So Amen. thank you, Mike, and looking forward. Yeah. Traveling mercies for all those. Any other prayer requests or testimonies this morning? All right, well, let's stand and go to the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, what a pleasure it is to come together, to gather together in your name, Lord. To lift up these needs before you, Lord, to speak the names of the people who need a touch in your lives, Lord. Thank you that it is finished, Lord. Every need that we speak today, that you have made the way, Lord. It is finished, Lord. We pray for Erica this morning, that you would heal that body, Lord. Heal her body, Lord. That you make a way, Lord, for her to travel home safely, Lord. That she walks out of that hospital whole, just as she was created, Lord. Speak to that brain, any concussion, any swelling in that brain, Lord. That it would be just fine. That she would have a miraculous recovery that stumps the doctors. And that you would be glorified and that you would show yourself real in her life, Lord. That you would call the storms in her life, Lord, and you would make a way for her. We pray for Dean, Lord, and all those who have come and gone, Lord. All those that we think of, that you bless them, Lord, wherever they may be this morning. All those who have come in and gone out. We thank you for the testimonies, Lord. We thank you for the testimonies of your goodness and of your mercy, Lord, of your provision, Lord of your healing, Lord. We thank you that you are our strength, Lord. That you are our strength, Lord, and that you always make a way forward, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that when we let it go and when we just turn to you, that you always lead us and guide us in victory, Lord. Jesus. And in this season of uncovering, Lord, help us to let go of the things we think are hidden and to bring everything into the light, Lord, where you can redeem it, Lord, where you can make it new, Lord. We have nothing to be ashamed of. Let us reach out to one another in love to lift each other up, Lord, that you perfect the work that you have begun in every individual in here, that you stir up the gifts, Lord, that you bring forth the fruit of the seeds that have been planted in everybody in here, we give you all the glory, Lord, as you reveal the pearls of great price, Lord, as you reveal the hidden mysteries that you have saved for just this time, Lord. Let us hunger and thirst for your word and let us come and partake. Let us eat from the bounty that you have provided. Let us drink from the well that we may never thirst again. We thank you that from our belly shall flow rivers of living water if we will just open up and praise your name and lift up the name of Jesus. Be lifted high today, Lord. Be lifted high into our lives, into this city, into this nation, into this world, Lord. That every knee should bow, every tongue shall confess. Jesus Christ is Lord, Lord of all, creator of heaven and earth, Savior, King. Name above all names, Jesus. We praise you this morning. You are great and greatly to be praised. You are our strength and our shield, Lord. You, are, Your name is a strong tower, Lord. And when we have a need, we run to it, Lord. We thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Have your way.
way in this service. Bless everybody this morning. Pour out your blessings, Lord. Pour them out this morning as we drink you in like a fine wine, Lord. Let us just soak in presence, Lord. Renew our joy, Lord. Jesus, you are blessed. You are welcome in this place. Come and have your way. In Jesus' name. telling you there is it's on if you have a word if you want to pray for somebody please let the holy spirit lead you this morning there is so much ministry in this room this morning i i was praying this morning and i didn't get something clear so the lord told me it's your morning it is your morning it is time for everybody to rise up and walk in your ministry pour it out this is a safe place where there's nothing but love here for every single person. So please, if you have a word, if you feel the need to pray, if you want to share something, please, please speak up. Jesus. Yes. Woo. All right. You know what? The first thing I said is we're going to wait on the Lord. It's the first scripture I read this morning, so why don't we listen to what the Lord told me to say this morning. Why don't we just wait on the Lord for a minute. Let's just love him this morning. Heavenly Father, we just love you this morning. We wait upon you, Lord. We come here to meet with you, Lord. reminder if you brought a cell phone this morning go ahead and silence it please april 22nd our first women's conference women of influence daughters of the king we encourage um, everybody we've had many of you come forward and want to participate want to share something the lord has on your heart um, talk to sarah talk to me and we will make sure that everybody is welcome to participate um, and uh, I'll, I'll have flyers starting wednesday I bought the paper, but I don't have time to print anything out. <laughs> um, we'll have flyers um, this Wednesday and then next Sunday, so just start handing them out. Tell everybody. Um, we'll create an event on Facebook and just want to make sure we get the word out. April 22nd. We're thinking 10 to 4. Women of, women of all ages, welcome. <laughs> Let's speak the word together this morning. Will you Will not, not revive us again, again that, that your people may rejoice in you? Yes, Lord. I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Every disease, every kind of 
Catholic doctrine this morning, please? <laughs>
God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise this morning. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. You may be seated. <clears throat> Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. Thank you, worship team. I'll just remind you of what already, has already been said multiple times this morning, and that is whatever you have need of, it's here. Amen. Especially if you are a believer, amen, you have the healer in you. You have the, the source of every need and every situation and every circumstance is within you right this very moment. Amen. Praise the Lord. You and he are one. And with that understanding, amen, you can walk in wholeness and completeness in every area of your life. Praise the Lord. Sounds like a big, uh, <clears throat> a big saying, but nothing too big for God. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's the way we have to look at it. Praise the Lord. So Sunday school kids, if you haven't already, you may leave now and go downstairs. Praise God. I want to uh, talk to you about that very thing this morning. Uh, you know, sometimes we try too hard when there's nothing for us to really do other than to receive and to believe. And uh, that's, I think, where God wants us to be. That's where we have to be to really be able to accomplish uh, this word, to see this word come to pass, not only in our lives but in, in this world. Praise the Lord. And uh, he's done everything that needs to be done. And now the, the, the responsibility for us is simply to believe and to step out and act on that truth. Praise God. And so let's go, if you, if you uh, have your Bibles, you want to go to the Bible, or we'll put it up here on the screen. Genesis chapter 2, verses 7 through 10. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. I love to feel the presence of the Lord, but the reality is, whether I feel it or not, the presence is still there. Hallelujah. Sometimes I feel it, sometimes I don't. Praise God. But uh, He's always there. Yes. Amen. If I, if I wait till I feel it, I could be waiting a while. Amen. For a healing or for a deliverance or for a word from the Lord. But we believe, therefore we speak. Praise the Lord. We declare what God has said. So, here we are, Genesis chapter 2, beginning at verse 7, and we'll read through verse 10. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Praise the Lord. So the first temple was God's dwelling place on earth. Amen? The garden was literally the first temple of God because it was the first place that God came to on the earth where he resided with man. Amen? Now, we know he's not confined to any one space, but that was his place here on earth to begin with. So look at 2 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 6, verse 16. 2 Corinthians 6 and 16. What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? You are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God and they shall beat my people. Just leave that up there, if you will, uh, for a moment, Mike, or excuse me, Roberto. So how's God going to be your God? I will dwell in them, 
and I will be their God. Amen. Amen? So that's God's answer to the question. How will he be my God? He's going to dwell in you. He's going to become one with you. Praise the Lord. So it would, I think it would be a good idea then for us to be conscious of this indwelling. Or it's like not having God. I mean, you have God. You're saved, right? But you're not getting any benefit here and now. And more importantly, neither is God. Praise the Lord. Man was created for nothing less, in fact, nothing else, than this indwelling. Yes. God wanted access to this earth. Yes. Praise the Lord. And he needed humanity yes, he to get it. Yes. Praise the Lord. So uh, everything God was in himself in heaven. Now think about this. Everything God was in heaven, and still is for that matter, but before there was earth, before he created this, before there were human beings here, everything that he was in himself in heaven, he was going to be the same on earth through men. Yes. Yes. And we, we have just dumped this thing down so far to where we're just, you know, we're still just groveling around here like Cro-Magnon, you know, or something, and rather than being who we were created to be. We were created to be a dwelling place for God. Amen. For God to have access to this planet, amen, to this world, to you and me and to people everywhere. Amen. That's what he wants, amen. So look at John chapter 14, and let's read verses 16 through 18, Roberto. John 14, 16 through 18. I really have a lot of scriptures this morning, probably even more than usual, but I want the Bible to interpret the Bible. I, I, want the, I want you to see this is what the Bible says. This isn't just something I spent a week making up. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, because he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Verse 23. Same chapter. Same chapter, please. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he'll keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Praise God. So we said that a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and the scripture said to give life. Amen. So let's go to Ezekiel chapter 47, and we'll read verse 1 to begin with here. Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 1. You know, we're talking about the flow, the rivers flowing. Man, we're looking at it. Yes. Yes. You know, we, we have a tendency to kind of spiritualize so much that we miss the reality. Yes. I mean, the Spirit is just trying to show us the reality. Yes. And we keep wanting to go back to something spiritual. And we're missing the point that we are that reality. We are the, we are the fulfillment of those types. We, Jesus, everything in the Old Testament was a typology, a type of Christ. He comes to fulfill all that. And we still got people wanting to run back to prayer shawls and mitzvahs and all this other stuff. And I'm not, I'm not trying to belittle anybody. I'm just saying you know, miss the point. The same way Israel missed the point. The one that all this pointed to has shown up. And you're missed him. Yes. Praise God. I'm not against talking spiritual stuff, but I'm just saying. You know what? We don't have to. No. It's okay. But how are you gonna how are you gonna communicate that to some unbeliever that way? Right. They think you've lost your mind. Yes. They think you're a flake. Sure. It's fun. It's fine for us. We we get it. We we know the metaphors. We know all the typology. We can do all that stuff. But you're talking to some unbeliever, some sinner. And they don't take that. You've lost your credibility. Yes. They think you're just a flip. You know, you're just goofy. Yes. Praise God. Well, praise the Lord. Afterward, he brought me again under the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house, eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house, out the south side of the altar. All right? Let's go to verse 9, Roberto. I don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to belittle anybody. I'm not mocking. I'm just saying. Sometimes we just miss what the point is here. Yes. 
And the point is not to try to recreate a spiritual atmosphere of the Old Testament when, in fact, they didn't even have the spirit. All that is pointing us to a greater reality. So all of these things we see, they, they actually happen. I, I, I'm not denying that, but I'm saying they are pointing to a bigger reality, a greater reality. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. So Adam and Eve were in the garden, and there was a river there. And the river flowed out, and it flowed out, and it multiplied. It became four rivers eventually. And we know if you want to go back, Euphrates and all these, these other rivers, Pison and so forth. That's true. But we're talking about a spiritual reality. And that's telling us something other than giving us a lesson in geography. And that's the point I'm trying to make this morning, amen, that we could move into these truths Instead of trying to replicate or repeat stuff that is, was trying to get us someplace else. Right. Amen. So it, it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the river, this river that we just read in verse 1 that's coming out from under the throne, whithersoever the river shall come, or out of the temple, shall live, and there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live. Wherever the river goes, wherever the river comes, life comes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Okay. Yes. Revelation 22, verses 1 and 2. So you can see this is throughout the Bible, right? And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God, of the Lamb, and of the Lamb, and in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So you can see the parallels all the way back to the garden. Well, the river of life is the presence of God. In Eden, the river flows from God's presence into the garden, brings life, and there, from there into the rest of the earth. Praise the Lord. God wants his image everywhere. Yes, he, he wants his glory to fill the earth. He wants his presence yes. to be known, yes. to be experienced. So in God's presence and in the temple, the river flows to bring life and light. The first temple in the garden, the temple that we're speaking of here uh, in, in uh, the scripture we just read from Isaiah, or from Ezekiel, excuse me. All right, look at Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 13. And it's a parallel. This is a parallel of Genesis 3, verses 6 through 8, where Adam and Eve bailed on God, right? They believed the devil. Now they're freaked out, and they cover themselves with the fig leaves because they're ashamed. Because now they know good and evil, where before they were just innocent. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. That's the parallel to Genesis chapter 3. And here's how God defines evil. He says there's two evils. Forsaking me, the fountain of living waters, and hewing out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns, that can't hold water. In other words, they, they, they don't want me, so they create something that I can't be present in. Right? He's, he's already defined himself as this living water, and they, the, the thing is actually, he pictures himself as this life-giving water, and he says, taste and see, you know, in the scripture, taste and see that the Lord is good. And you commit two evils. It's a double insult to God and the essence of what evil is. In Adam and Eve and in Jeremiah's time, people tasted the fountain of God's grace, his love, his mercy, his goodness, his presence, and they didn't like it. They looked for something better, something that was more satisfying. And what did they find? Death. Instead of the waters of life, death enters in. 
because they've created something that can't hold the presence of God. Something outside of the dwelling place that God intended them to be. Religion is not ever going to satisfy the thirst for God's presence. No matter how much of it you get, no matter how much of it you try to exercise, no matter how much of it, no matter how you try to exercise that religion, it won't satisfy. Because it's a broken sister and it can't hold the presence of God. Hallelujah. John 6, verse 35. And look what Jesus said. This is, it's all through the Bible because it is what God is trying to get across to us. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Well, here's what he's saying. Believing in me includes a taste for living water. Yes. Right? You don't want cisterns, broken cisterns. You want to be the temple. You want to be the dwelling place of God. You've gotten a taste, amen, and you decide that's pretty good. Praise the Lord. And that's what God is trying to get across to us on a, on a continuous basis. I'm good. Taste every day. Taste some more. Have some more. Have some more. Praise the Lord. You can't be overflowing. I mean, you can't be overfilled. You can overflow, but you won't lose a thing. Praise God. Eden was the first place of God's presence on the earth. What was it? Before the broken cisterns came, it was a place of satisfaction, a place of fulfillment, and a place of completeness. No shame. Just like when Jesus says, when he, if you believe in it, Paul talks about it in Romans 7, then leaping to, to chapter 8, he says, there is therefore now no condemnation, amen, for those who have drank deep from the living water. Right? No condemnation, no guilt, no shame. The way it was back in the garden. Amen. Not a consciousness of sin. Amen. And innocence. Praise God. If I ever read, or maybe you saw the movie, John Steinbeck wrote a book called East of Eden. Now the Bible says they, they, God put a garden, not east of Eden, but in eastern Eden. The problem is, most of us are like the novel. We're living east of Eden. Amen? Even though we have access, even though we have God's dwelling in us, we still live outside. We're still living outside the garden, although God restored us to the garden to the place of completeness, to the place of satisfaction, to the place of fullness, to the place of God's life living through us and in us. Amen. And see, you don't need a healer. You just need to know you're healed. You are the healer. You take the healing. Amen? Amen. You know, we spend a lot of time trying to get something we already got. And, and the problem is, if you would give it away, you'd realize what you got. Whether, whether you feel healed or not isn't the issue. I don't feel saved all the time. How about y'all? Sometimes you just feel like, man, I, that was not a saved day. Praise the Lord. That was a day from hell. But... You have God in you. And you can release God to other people even when you're ungodly. Even when you're not ever doing everything perfect. And that doesn't make you a hypocrite. It makes you a human. Amen? And you, you would find that the more you release of God, the more aware you are of God. The more you are sure of God's presence. Amen? So when you pray for the sick, you can't help but feel like there's a healing going on in my body at the same time because I'm releasing something to them. Praise God. You just do it. You don't have to try. You just do it. You don't have to feel a certain way. You don't have to act a certain way. You just do it. Because it's who you are. It's what you are. If you want to do other stuff with it, that's fine. But that's just us. Look at Jesus. What do you want from me? 
I want my hand healed. Be healed. Right? That we might see. See? We need to get, we need to be who we are instead of trying to make ourselves look like something that's, uh, that's not really understandable. You know, look, we, you just, Al, Alvin said, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, whatever it was, his knee was bothering him, right? Yeah. Put your hand on it, Alvin, right? Isn't that what I said? Yeah. Put your hand on it. Yeah. And we just agreed. He was healed. Did I heal him? No, I didn't heal him. Alvin healed him. The Spirit of God healed him is what I'm saying, but the Spirit that was in Alvin, he didn't really need me. I was just agreeing with him. Right? So you got to you come to somebody who's a non-believer. Now it takes you. Because they don't believe in the one that's in you, but you do. So all you're doing is releasing it. Amen. That's all you're doing. It's not, it's not complicated and it, because it's not about you. Exactly. And the more we, you know, do some of the things we do, the more complicated we make it. Absolutely. The more it becomes about us. Are you, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not, try, I'm not being critical because I know this is how things work. I'm just saying that isn't the way it works. It works by us just releasing the God that's in us. And that's not hard to do. You just give it away, man. It, it's free. It, I, it, freely I receive. Freely I give. And it's all about God. Then Nobody's getting glory. We're not raising up a new healing ministry or some other thing. We're, we're just giving some of what we got for nothing to somebody else for nothing. And you'll be, you'll be surprised to see people get healed. People get delivered. People prosper. Praise God. That's why we're here. That's why God came to dwell in us. To be available. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10 Verses 19 through 22. I know somebody's talking about, you know, grace and if, you know, if you do, you know, if you believe in that grace, you'll do more spiritual things or holy things by accident than you ever did on purpose. Well, I'm paraphrasing that by simply saying, if you just wake up to the indwelling of Christ, you'll see more miracles in your life by accident than you have ever seen on purpose. On you trying to create something. You, you, and you'll realize you have opportunity all the time. Because yes. Yes. you don't have to have a prayer meeting. You don't have to have a, you know, a Bible study. You just release God. There's nothing wrong with prayer. There's nothing wrong with Bible studies. Don't misunderstand me. But I'm just saying, sometimes that's actually an obstacle. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just say, hey, Jesus loves you and he wants you healed. Amen. And here he is, free. You're not going to pay for it by being really good tomorrow. And you probably weren't really good yesterday, so you didn't earn it. He just wants you to have it. Yes. He just wants you to experience him. All right? So having, therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Back to God's presence. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what they're talking about here. <clears throat> All right. John chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. And actually, when you begin to understand this a little more clearly, you'll realize how valuable you really are to God. How special and how precious you are to God. You're the means by which he gets to be revealed. That he has access into this world and access to the people that he loves, even when they're unlovable. 
even when they don't love him. Look, the thing, it'll work for them the same way it worked for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Praise the Lord. So Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but that but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Does that sound familiar? All right. John 7, verses 37 through 39. In other words, the water of life is going to come to you. We read where it washes you. It, it cleanses you. And then it becomes in you. Mm -hmm. We use all the other analogies of the spirit and so on and so forth. But I'm just talking, I'm just focusing on this right now. So he says, if you believe, if you, if you drink from this river of God's presence, God's presence will then be in you and it'll well up in you life that can be released to other people. Yeah. Amen. So in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. All right? So God's purpose was to fill the earth with his presence and with his glory, right? Yeah. All right, look at Genesis 1.28 again. You're not going to get much of a break here. I'm sorry. Genesis 128, God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now, did he, what did he mean? Yes, he wanted them to procreate. He wanted, he wanted them to, to watch over this creation of his and he wanted them to multiply the humanity on this planet. That's true. But there's a greater meaning to that, and that is God wants his spirit multiplied. Yeah. He wants image bearers that can bear his spirit so that he can be in more places, so that yeah. he can be multiplied. Yeah. It's the same. You can use the metaphor of the river. It's one river coming out from God, but it immediately it breaks off into four yeah. branches. It multiplies so that it can reach out further into the world. So God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Praise God. All right. Uh, John 15, verse 16. John 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, I have chosen you, and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. It's, it's, it's just like what we just read in Genesis 1.28. All right, Colossians chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of the uh, truth of gospel, which is come to you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. Verses 9 and 10, same chapter. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, so that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Okay, so it's the Word of God. It's God's presence, not people, that produce fruit. We just bear fruit. We just bear the fruit, but we don't produce a thing. Right. It's the living water in us. Praise the Lord. It'll multiply. It's the God's presence. You know, Jesus said in, in John 5, 19, the Son can do nothing of himself. This was Jesus. He said, I can't do anything. I can only do what I see my father do. Mm -hmm. That'd be a good place to start yeah. for us. Yeah. I can't do anything, but he that's in me is greater than he that's in the world. He's yeah, greater he than is. the sickness you're dealing with. He's greater than the, the financial issue you've got going on. He's, he's greater than the relational junk that happens in all of our lives. 
Give, let me give you a taste of him. Yeah. The word of God makes us image bearers. Mm -hmm. Makes us fruitful. John 15, verses 7 and 8. John 15, 7 and 8. See, the more we realize this, the more we walk in this, we become the image of God everywhere. Yeah. Walmart, Target, I don't care, wherever you go, the grocery store, the, you know, the gas station, the quick trip, whatever it might be. It's just, it can just be natural for you. And people will receive it more, more readily if you are being natural. God gave you your personality. He created you and designed you unique to yourself. Why? Because he wants in there, and he wants to be able to reach the people that you can reach. The people that you connect with, the people that connect with you, the people that understand, the people that you can relate to. We, we all know this. We, we, we live in the real world. We know there's some people you just can't get along with them. Right? You know, it's, it's not like you're a bad person or... They're a bad person. It's just we clash sometimes. Sometimes personalities just don't mesh. And the more you try, the phonier you look. Yeah. I mean, don't you feel phony? Hallelujah. I heard this guy say, you know, uh, he, he come to the church, and in the parking lot of the church, there was a dead mule, a donkey, jackass, you know, laying dead in the, in the parking lot. So he calls up the animal uh, control people, and he says, come get this dead jackass out of my parking lot. And the guy said, I'm sorry. He said, we can't do any of that. He said, without permission for, or without instructions from the mayor. He yeah. said, you'll have to call the mayor. And the mayor was a real belligerent jerk. He just couldn't get along with anybody, and he, and he didn't like Christians either. So the guy knew he was in for a tough time. But he calls him anyway, and he says, Mayor, look, uh, I, I, I need you to get this jackass, this dead jackass, out of our parking lot. And the mayor says, what are you calling me for? And he said, well, called the animal people, and they, they referred us to you and said, you had to give the okay. He said, aren't you a pastor? And he said, yeah. And he said, well, I thought you took care of dead people. <laughs> and the pastor said, uh, yeah, that's true. But he said, I try to always get a hold of the next of kin first. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh. So sometimes that's kind of where we find ourselves, right? I mean, we just you get sucked right into that, and nothing really positive comes of it. Amen. But God said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you will and it'll be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. So it's God wants you to bear fruit. He wants you to have ministry. He wants you to be powerful and effective because your fruit gives God glory. Yes. It glorifies God in the earth. That person you prayed for that gets healed and you say, look, they know, they know you, right? They know me, and they're going to say, he ain't healed anybody. No, but the God that's in me. Yeah. All of a sudden, God is glorified. God is more real to that person than he was before, right? Yeah. He's, he's just picked up some territory. Yes. The river just flowed a little bit further yeah. than it had before. Yeah. Amen. That's what he's trying to get us to see. So now, we understand, you know, we, we have this relationship with God. We, have, we are the dwelling place for God. Because he has declared us righteous, right? He couldn't be in us if we were unrighteous because he won't, he won't be in the same place with sin. So he cleanses us of all unrighteousness and he gives us God life, righteous life. Right. Now, look at the, those pictures throughout the Old Testament. He tells Noah. Now, Noah was not a good guy. It wasn't like he was really sinless. He just had good blood. He hadn't, his bloodline hadn't been tainted by the pagans and all the idolatry and all the other junk that was going on and if you if you understand some of that stuff with the Nephilim and you know and the fallen angels had intermingled with uh, human women and, and, and the offspring are demonic and so on and so forth. His bloodline was pure. Yes. And that's why God declared him righteous. And here's what he says. God says to righteous Noah, what did he say? Be fruitful. Multiply. Yeah. Right? That's, the, that's what the righteous do. Yeah. Abraham. I mean, we know that we read the life of this guy. He was a mess. Yeah. Yeah. A liar, uh, pimping his wife and everything else. 
all the stuff that goes on. And yet God declares him righteous. By faith, he was righteous. And what did he tell him? I'm going to bless you so that you could be a blessing. Be fruitful. Multiply. Fill the earth. With what? With God. That's all he had to give. That's all he had to fill the earth with. All right, Genesis chapter 26, verses 3 and 4. And this points back to what God had told Adam. Genesis 26, verses 3 and 4. Sojourn in this land, and I'll be with you. I'll bless you. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham your father. And I will make your seed to multiply as the stars of the heavens. And will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. See, Eden was just supposed to keep getting bigger. Praise the Lord. So, remember this, the story about Jacob at Bethel? Bethel, the house of God, Beth, house, El, God. House of God. It's like Bethlehem. So, he, he says, he, he went to this place called Bethel, and he said, surely the Lord is in the place. Let's look at there, Genesis chapter 28, uh, verses 12 through 17. And I'm just, I'm just showing you how this is happening over and over and over in the Bible. And, you know, we're seeing it, we read it, but we're not connecting the dots, you know. It's like finding Waldo. <laughs> He's right there in front of us, but we can't see him for all the other stuff around us. Praise the Lord. So he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending onto it. And behold, or on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of to thee. Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. All right, so the promise isn't dependent on Jacob. But it's dependent on the presence of God who is with Jacob. Praise the Lord. God's glory won't be confined to some geographic location or individual, but it will flow till it fills the earth. Mm -hmm. And it needs people to flow. Yes. Praise the Lord. John chapter 1, verse 51. How many of you know we are now Heirs, joint heirs with Jesus. As far as God's concerned, we are just like Jesus. Jesus said, I'm not ashamed to call him brothers. He was the firstborn of many brethren. That'd be us. Amen. So he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Why? Because now he's the house of God. At that point, he was the house of God on planet Earth. He was the dwelling place for God. Yes. And that's why he used the same, he referred them back to the scripture in Genesis of Jacob, seeing the ladder and angels ascending and descending and saying, surely this is Bethel. This is, surely this is the house of God. Yes. God was here and I didn't know it. Jesus is telling the same thing. God's here and you're not aware of it. But you're going to see before I leave, you're going to see angels ascending and descending to the Son of Man or to the house of God. Now, how many of you know you are now the house of God? He's told us that over and over in here. You, the angels are ascending and descending. They're coming and going. They're ministering spirits to the believers. Yes. Wow. Amen? Just like they were to Christ. They came and ministered to him after he had fasted, right? Yes. They're here for you. Yes. Praise God. Remember the Samaritan woman? You worship, you, you worship God in Jerusalem. 
She said, we, we worship here on our father's hill or our grandfather's, whatever it was, on this mountain. And look how Jesus just flips the whole dialogue, or the, yeah, the dialogue here. He says, uh, well, he said, the day is coming, and now is, where you will neither worship in Jerusalem or on the mountain, but you will worship in spirit and in truth. Not a place, a presence. There's nothing wrong with having a church building and all that, but look, you can't confine him here. You can't. Because we are the dwelling place. This is just a meeting place. When we come, he comes with us. We don't have to call him down. We don't have to invite him in. We just got to let him out. I mean, I understand the language because that's what we, you know, this is Christian stuff. That's the way we talk. But the truth is, he's so powerful in you everywhere. We become more aware of it here because of worship and because we're focused. I do that with my grandson all the time. He's a little scatterbrained. He's kind of like I was as a kid. And I'm always saying, Clint, Bubba, focus. Focus. Because if not, he's going to tear something up. Including himself. So I'm always trying to get, tune in here. Come back to planet Earth. We're, we're, let's figure out what we're going to do. And that's what we have to do. Focus. Focus. And, and then just be what you are and watch what happens. Praise God. I mean, I, I, love, get, I love going with the, and the spirit and that. But, you know, that, all that is about is it, it's a way of us showing our thanks to God, our love for God, our faith in God, our belief in God, and it honors God, and he inhabits that. But it's our praise that he inhabits. It's us that he inhabits. And we just become more conscious of that reality when we're focused on him. If you would focus on God throughout your day, you'd find he's inhabiting that all the time. He's there. He's wanting to be released. He's wanting that river to flow. Yes. Just like it flew, flowed out of, out of that first temple in, in Eden and the way it flowed out from under the foundation in the second temple and how it flowed from Jesus. And he said, if you'll drink this water, it'll flow from you the same way. Yes. Yes. We have become the temple of God. Yes, we have. The river's wanting to flow. It's wanting to flow. It's wanting to multiply life yes. Yes. wherever it goes. And so, in a sense, we have hewn out cisterns. I'm not saying we're rejecting God, but we're offering something other than the life of God, and it won't produce anything. Right. It's broken, and it won't hold life. It won't hold the water of God. Religion won't do that. Only you can do that. Right. Praise the Lord. In John 4.14, or 4, 14, he says, In him will be, in who? In you, in me, in the human. Whosoever drinks of the water that I give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in them, or in him, her, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The presence gives water, gives life that will in him become a well, a spring of life, giving water. That's why Jesus said, if you believe this, greater works than these will, these will you do because I go to my Father. You can ask the Father anything in my name and he'll give it to you. You can release the water and it'll do what it's supposed to do. We, we think that he meant, okay, uh, God, please heal this person. Nothing wrong with that, but that isn't really what Jesus is saying. No. The only time you really see him praying before any of that was, was at the tomb of Lazarus. And that was, he said himself, it's not for me, because I know you already know what I'm going to do, what you would do. But this is for them. 
So the majority of those kind of prayers are not for us. They're for the people that are standing around trying to figure out what's going on. All you got to do is release that life that's in you. That's, what is that? That's Jesus. It's the spirit of Christ. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. The living water that he gave you is his spirit that you release. Amen. So it's not a question of asking. It's a question of agreeing with. Ask anything in my name. Be healed. Be set free. Be prospered. Find that devil. Amen. Amen. Whatever you bind on earth. Praise God. So it's a river of life that flowed from the presence of God in Eden. Exodus chapter 40, verses 34 and 35. Exodus 40, verse 34 and 35. Excuse me. <coughs> then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, the, the tabernacle, the temple, right? And the cloud covered the tent, the congregation, the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle, the Shekinah, the, the presence of God, the glory of God. Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Praise God. So, John chapter 2, verses 19 through 21. Talking about the glory now. John 2, 19 through 21. Stay with me and we'll try to put it together a little more here. So Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. What was that temple where the glory filled? It was a type. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was functional. It was what they used, but everything in it was pointing to Jesus. Yeah. The manna. The shoe bread, right? The, the candlestick. Did you ever, ever look at a menorah? It's the tree of life, man. It's in there. It's in that place, just outside of the Holy of Holies, just outside of the presence of God. There's a labyrinth. There's a place of water for water to flow, for sacrifices, so on and so forth. Okay, so the temple, three days. And all, he said, destroy this temple. And in three days I'll raise it up. And then said the Jews, 40 and six years with this temple and building, and, now, and you're going to rear it up in three days? We took us almost 50 years to build this thing, and you think you're gonna, it's going to be destroyed, you're going to raise it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. Right? Now, in John 1.14, there is a translation that goes, the word, remember, the, he says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. There's one translation that says, the literal translation actually says, the word became flesh and tabernacled among us. Praise the Lord. Tabernacled. Tinted. All right? Genesis 3 and 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst uh, the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. They were spooked, they were afraid, they were ashamed, they were guilty, right? So the presence is in Eden. And then it's Jesus in the Holy of Holies. Ephesians chapter 2, verse, verse 18. Ephesians 2, verse 18. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Praise the Lord. Verse 22. In whom you also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. You are the temple of God. I will dwell in you. I will walk in you. I said here a couple weeks ago, when God was walking in the garden, he was walking with Adam and Eve. He was walking in Adam and Eve. He breathed the life into Adam. That was his access. That was his first temple. Amen? He says, I'll dwell in you. I'll walk in you. 
You can talk to God all day long. He's walking with you all the time. And we're looking around trying to see, was that him? Was that him? Was that a manifestation? Was that it? Was that it? Maybe I'll just take a good look in the mirror. Oh, there you are. Paul said, I, I look at you and I see nothing but Christ and him crucified. This isn't the image of God. The image is in here. And it's perfect. It heals. It delivers. It prospers. It has compassion. It always gives grace and love. Praise the Lord. So how does a river flow? 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Know you not, you are the temple of God, and that the spirit or the life or the river of God dwells in you. We are God's dwelling place. And from our foundation, remember Jesus said built, a man doesn't build his house on a sure foundation if it isn't built on Christ, on the word of God. There'll be a storm come. There'll be winds come. We know we all got them. We all have them. If you have it, you will. But that house will stand. It will not fall because it's built on a rock. It's built on a solid foundation. Amen? So we had this foundation, the Word of God, the Spirit of God. And the river shall still flow like it did in Eden, like it did in the original temple that Ezekiel saw. The river still flows and spreads the presence of God throughout the earth, right out from under us, right out of us, from our foundation. The river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it multiplied to water the entire earth. Look at Isaiah 54, verse 2. I'm not saying that's a metaphor. In a sense it is, but it's a reality. It's a true thing. But it's pointing to a greater truth. Again, that's, the, that's what I'm trying to get across. So Isaiah 54, verse 2, enlarge the place of thy tent. I said here a while back, and those of you that have been around me for years know that, that Isaiah 54 is a, is a scripture that he gave me when I first got saved. I mean, I hadn't been saved more than few months maybe and I was praying in the bedroom that little house in East Texas where we're living and the Lord spoke to me some few things and one of them was Isaiah 54 and I'm telling you the honest to God truth I didn't know there was an Isaiah 54 I didn't know there was an Isaiah at the time Amen. I had to go find it mm -hmm. and I read it and I thought whew I'm going to have to learn God language here somehow because this doesn't make any sense to me. So over the years, it's been little things here and there would be opened up to me. But I'm seeing more and more in these last days than I have ever before. And that's what I'm going to talk yeah. to you about. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. The place of your tent. The house of God. I'm not talking about this building. I'm not talking about a mega ministry. That whatever God wants to do with that's between him and, the, and Jesus, I guess, you know. I'm just, what he's telling, this is what he's telling me personally. And therefore, he's telling the same thing to you because it's the word of God. Amen? Amen. The house of God. The presence of God. Expand the tent of God's presence. How do I do that? By being aware that wherever I am, yes. God's there. Yes. That's how I expand the tent. I don't build a bigger building. I don't try to put on more weight. I don't try to, you know, ha have something else to say or do. I just have to be focused and aware of God's presence with me wherever I am. And all of a sudden, his presence expands. It becomes bigger. It enlarges the place of his tent. See, that's what I'm saying. He's saying that to all of us. Verse 3. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. So the river is flowing out into all the world to fill the world with God's image. Yes. Yes. Praise God. 
Look at the, let's read verses 11 through 17. Remember, you are the temple of God. Am I right? That, that scripture's told us that over and over. We've, we've, we've seen this, right? So who's he talking to here? He's not talking about some building in Israel or anywhere else. He's talking about you. And he says, I'm going to do something new. This is how I'm going to look. You're going to be so beautiful. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel, who share the gospel, who share God's life, right? Yes. That's you. That's every one of us. Amen. O oh, thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair color, and lay thy foundations with sapphires. And I will make thy windows of agates, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Hallelujah. Because they're going to be right there around the temple. Amen. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against you shall fall for your sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against you. This temple ain't coming down. Amen. Every tongue that rises against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. If the temple was so precious to Israel and to God by virtue of the fact that was his dwelling place on earth, how much more are we? That's, what he's, that's the message he's trying to get across to us. You're, you're more beautiful to me than any building that they could have been. I don't care how much Solomon paid for it. I don't care how much David saved for it. I don't care how much Herod spent on the on the second temple, it doesn't matter. Yes. You're the temple I've been looking for. I never asked for one. I never wanted one built with men's hands, but I accepted it because it's all there was. You yes. are the design yes. I had in mind. More beautiful than any physical temple that had ever been built. That's how he sees us. The temple. All right, let's go on to Isaiah 55, and let's read verse 1. Isaiah 55, very next verse. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come to this temple. Because there's a river that's flowing out from the foundation of it. Everybody that thirsts, come to the waters that he may, that he that has no money can't earn this, can't buy it. It's grace. It's a free gift from God. Come buy, eat, and you may you can come buy wine and milk without money, without price. Verse ten and eleven. For as the rain comes down, the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and it maketh bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Now, we always read this, as the rain comes down, I get it. But it's also just another way of saying, as the water comes, as my spirit comes, right? It comes like the snow, it comes like rain, but as it comes, how many of you know rivers are created because of melting snow that comes down the mountain, or they, it's because of rain that feeds them? Amen. The Nile had the rainy season every year. It would overflow its banks, and that's how they got their rice crops and all, whatever else they had. So that's, that's what he's saying. Make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where unto or where to I send it. How did he send it? By the water, by the river, yes. by you. Yes. Praise God. Verse 13. Instead of the thorn, what did he tell Adam? Thistles, thorns, that's what you're going to be messing with, man. Because you've messed up the river. Yeah. Right? He's just told us this water's coming back and where it's coming from. And then he said, instead of the thorn, shall come up the fir tree. Instead of the briar, shall come up the myrtle tree. Then it shall be to the Lord for a name. 
for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Remember, he said, Jesus was talking about this, and he said, I make all things new. I'm giving everything new life. Praise the Lord. I'm going back to the Father, but I'm sending back this river, and it will be in you, and it will overflow to life, and you'll make all things new. Praise the Lord. Last scripture, Ezekiel chapter 47, verses 1 through 9. I can read these scriptures. When you read them, think about you. Yeah. Think about it's you that God is talking about. You are the temple. You are the, the epitome of what he's talking about here because of Christ. Hallelujah. Afterward, he brought me again into the door of the house. Behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Go right through uh, verse 9. So then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without into the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. When the man that had the Lying in his hand went forth eastward. He measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Afterward he measured a thousand, and it was a river, a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. And when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were many, very many trees on the one side of the, uh, and the other. And said he unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, Whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither. For they shall be healed, and everything shall live wherever the river goes, wherever the river comes. Amen? He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Water to swim in, water that can't be passed over, water that can't be denied, waters of healing, waters of life, waters of restoration, waters that make all things new. And the glory of the Lord shall fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. We are the temple of God. And the river flows from us with God's glory in mind. Yes. Just flow, man. I mean, just roll on river. Praise the Lord. The old rolling on the river. Hallelujah. Oh. You see, a river doesn't have to get up every day and decide where it's going. It just flows. Amen? Your life has a destiny. It has a purpose. It says he directs our steps. There's banks you don't see. But you're in it anyhow. That river's flowing, and it's flowing where God wants it to flow, to touch, to heal, to deliver, to do all that it says it must do for God's glory to be revealed. Amen. All we got to do is just roll with the flow. Mm -hmm. I mean, just go with the flow. Yes. Yes. Just be you wherever you find yourself yes. and watch the river flow. Yes. See if God won't show you himself mighty. Yes. Amen for his glory. He cannot deny his word. He, we read it. Comes down like water. And wherever it goes, it produces crops. It produces healing. It produces whatever the need might be. Amen? Just see yourself that way. See yourself as that river. Amen. And watch if God doesn't just show up in a miracle. Amen?
Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You're, you're, you're way more than you think you are. You are the dwelling place of God. Hallelujah. That's a pretty good thing. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I, I apologize earlier. I was the guy God gave something to the say here today. Um, I mean, this, I was kind of confused by it this morning as like the day progressed. I'm like, wow, I'm, everything just kind of like filled in to me. Uh, I was driving, cutting through a neighborhood this morning, driving down to our business. It's a real nice brand new neighborhood. All this beautiful, real big, nice houses. I mean, not even right, three, four months old. And out in front of this house, my driveway was sitting in his car. And I noticed it last night when we were coming home. But it had a bunch of string and stuff like hanging out, like they went to somewhere and bought something and you know didn't pull all the trash out. It was kind of hanging out the door in this nice car in this nice neighborhood, and uh, I'm like, that's kind of strange, you know. And, and uh, I started hearing God kind of speaking to me as I drove. The next car I saw the next house, the bottom of the car is he's <coughs> hanging down and like dragging on it. I'm like, man, the driver just you know doesn't even don't they know their cars are broken? And I think that's what came to me inside is God. Is saying uh, he wants to clean the junk out of our trunk, and the thing about that is, is that all the lies and stuff that the enemy puts inside of us that fill us up inside. Because I mean, we're taught in church that we are a, a building, a tabernacle, you know, that we're actually a temple. But like you said, the tabernacle is mobile, and so what God was showing me is that we're, you know, on the earth here, we're mobile. We have hands, we have feet. You know, we're the body of Christ. We're vehicles, and we're not a, a house that sits there. You know, and that's what religion wants to teach you. You know, you're a temple of God and all this stuff. And, but we're actually service vehicles. And so he needs us to get, he wants, the Holy Spirit wants to pull the junk out of the inside of us so he can indwell us so that we are of service to man. And as we go, everywhere we go, you know, we can release it's that glory that wants to fill us and be let out. Amen. You know, and, that, and so it's spring, springtime, you know, clean the junk out also. Uh, I noticed we were driving to the Amish camps here a week ago, and everybody knows that spring is just an internal thing. I mean, everybody knows. You know, you wait for it, you wait for it, but you finally know it's right on the verge. And you go out and you'll see all the farmers are burning their grass off. Yeah. You know, it says, uh, you know, like in, in 1 Corinthians, uh, was it 3, that not only are we God's building, but we're also his field. And so yeah. in the spring, God wants to burn off all that stuff that's grown the weeds from the previous year, you burn off. And, and if you look at the parable of the seed and the sower, it talks about the, the weeds come up and choke out. The word takes root and starts to grow, but the weeds choke it out. So that's what I mean. That's what God wants to do is he wants to prepare us for a new thing. And so that's why he needs us. And the Holy Spirit, if we will just believe him, like Nathan was saying today, E.W. Kenyon says the same thing. He's like, well, you believe in God inside you. And so all this stuff's already been provided. Healing. Every spiritual blessing's been given to us in Christ. But the question is, so we don't even have to have faith to have it. We just have to believe that it's there. Believe in God. Yeah. I mean, we don't even have to have it. It's not like we have to, have to pray the prayer of faith to receive healing. It's already been done. So it's just something we just have to receive. So the quite the point about that, I think all this is, is that he just wants us to get us to the point and clean out the junk so we can receive what he's already given us. Yeah. I mean, that's, and of course, most of that is religious stuff. And to your point about the temple, see, the, the perfect, I guess, Design was the original, the tabernacle, because it was a movable thing. It was always moving. Wherever the people went, you know, actually, you could say wherever God went, the people went, because he was the cloud by day and the pillar of fire at night. And that's where the ta tabernacle would go. Well, obviously, they built the temple uh, in Jerusalem, but God couldn't inhabit people because the spirit wasn't poured out. So he inhabited a holy of holies. That was his quote-unquote dwelling place on earth. But we are, because Jesus uh, tore back the veil, he was the Holy of Holies, the, the, the place where God dwelt on earth that made the temple irrelevant, right? Mm -hmm. And it was destroyed afterward because they, they preferred their cistern, a broken cistern, rather than something that actually held the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And so then he tells us, now you're going to be the temple. Yes. And that's the point is, wherever we are, the temple is. Yes. The, it is it's, the temple simply is a way of saying God's presence. Amen. You're the dwelling place of God. Amen. Amen. So we make, as Eric says, because this is what we do, we make, we make it up the temple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
It's not about the temple. The temple is just simply a place for God to dwell. Yeah. Right? It's, the, it's God's place. It, it, it's where God is. Yeah. And, so that's, and that's what we have to realize. And that when you do this, when you understand that, you see, that's my point, is that it, 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 you, you become no more part of the equation. Right. You are the vehicle. Yes. I'm your vehicle, baby. I'll take you anywhere you want to go. I mean, that's what we ought to be saying to God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we ought to just, wherever we go. See, it takes us, it takes us, mm -hmm. this outside thing, out of it. I don't have to be, I don't have to act a certain way, I don't have to look a certain way. I just got to get God where he's going. And just let it go. Just let it happen. Amen? Now, that's not to say we ought to be idiots, you know, and act stupid. But, but I'm saying, just be you. Be who God created you to be, and you are the dwelling place of God. You, you'll take him to places. I mean, each one of us have a circle of friends or acquaintances or, or, or relationships that are unique to us. Exactly. Exactly. We just go where we go and the river flows. The river yes. goes out into the earth and heals everything that it touches. Amen. Not because of us. I said before, we don't produce fruit. We get to bear fruit, but we're not producing it. It's the God that's in us. It's the root. Right. It's the vine that produces. Exactly. So you don't have to feel any sense of responsibility. The, the leaves on the tr trees out there are, are you know, shaking and yeah. wringing their little twigs at the end of it. Oh my, I don't know if there's going to be any fruit this year. You know, I mean, we're hearing all that stuff. No, they're just hanging. They're just doing what they do. And the tree, the tree will either produce fruit or it won't. And if it produces, it'll, be, it'll show up on the branches. The branches aren't responsible to do anything other than to bear it, to show it to everybody else. That's us. That's all we got to do. Abide in Christ. Stay focused on your connection with him. And he'll produce the fruit wherever you go. Fruit will show up. Amen. Give the Lord another hand this morning. Glory to God. Amen. God bless you. Go in the power of his might. That's who we are and what we are to do. Praise God. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless all of you.